So we got to the point of talking about um, of talking about uh, the curriculum itself. Um, it's in ninety pages. It's got eight sections and the GPAT. So the GPAT will be familiar to any of you who's watching Geeks because of the assessment tool based on this curriculum. So um, the workup and all this stuff prior to three. This is um, decision making. The doing is four. And everything else afterwards is uh, five, six, seven, and eight. So you might notice that in this huge document, at the doing um, only sits in four, one of the sections. But in most curricula, in most documents, for most societies, four doesn't exist. Um, how do you assess a large non-pedagogic non -pedagogic pilot for something goes invasion? Use the algorithm uh, that we have outlined yesterday and which we will discuss in detail later um, to look for a demarcated area, characterize that demarcated area, and if it does not exist, assess for risk of buried cancer. So um, how does it work? Well, uh, you assess it from afar, you get your paused image, you look at it and you think, okay, what's the risk that's got of cancer? Uh, you might say, well, it's pretty rare, there's a bit of extra redness here, it's pretty much a big nodule. It's in the rectum. And then you need to have the right materials to do um, polypectomy. So um, you must, 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 in your unit, have everything available to do uh, a correct procedure. You cannot start having bleeding, for example, in that second case, say that the negative subcoagulation had not worked, uh, Andrea's case. So then what about... Uh, Patient consent. So, of course, detecting a polyp in a screening list, big polyp, and then starting to cut it off is probably not appropriate. Um, and it's not appropriate because the patient does not, has not made a decision about what the pros and cons are, that you have not explained your point of view to them. The things that you need to be talking about in the consent process are really important. So, you need to talk about a lot of things. You need to take time for it. You probably should have a consultation with the patient. You should not just be having this conversation outside the endoscopy room or worse, in the endoscopy room as the patient's going to sleep for the procedure.